if you think that that's all she's giving you, she don't want you for real. Because women have other things. Like, we just don't want to give it to y'all. Y'all don't even deserve mm-hmm. nothing but sex. If your I flex as a woman is, well, I could have sex with you and not give you no value, you ain't doing nothing but a disservice to yourself. And y'all complaining why men don't commit. If you, all you want to give is sex to a man and then wonder why he not commit because you didn't show him no other value outside of sex. Mm-hmm. When men are on dates and they ask, I'm curious, what, what do you bring to the table? And y'all come with, I am the table. That's a red flag automatically. Like, cause you can't properly express your value to a man without getting defensive and saying, well, I am the table. Let me tell y'all something, man. If a woman believes that just giving you sex is a good thing for her, she is the worst kind of 304 in the world. Because her only value, her only true value is her sex. You can go anywhere to get the lies, but I know you came here to get the truth. Welcome to the Alphasphere. Welcome to the Alphasphere. The only place on the planet that's totally engulfed in positivity and totally submerged in alpha energy. I'm your host, Dr. B.O.A. Well, see, I'm old, so I could do polygamy. I would just want her to be younger so he don't have to be bothering me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Go over there. She's 42. I'm 70. Go on. Take your butt on over there. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell y'all, that sounds funny, but what she's saying, she's being honest, but she's saying it in a joking manner. I'm 70. I can't do nothing for you physically. But even at my old age, I do want companionship and provision. I do want a husband. They want been single this whole time. It take her to get 70. And when she can't get no man to realize, you know what? I think I can be polygamous. I think I can be. See, here's the thing about it. If you're going to have a woman, you can't have two of the same women. You got to have a woman that's established. You got to have a woman that's not established. That way they're never competing with one another. Competition starts when you get two equal things and try to put them in the same space. They got to compete for that space. But if one woman has her has a stronghold on the 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 household to where she kind of she has more say than the other woman in the household because she contributes more to the household. She got she cool with that. The woman who don't contribute into the household, she don't care because she ain't got to be responsible for no bills. But what she is, she responsible for the thrills. Here's a woman over here. that's responsible for the frills and a woman over here. They're responsible for the thrills. You got to keep in mind that the majority of women eventually age out of options to where they're OK being what she's saying in a polygamous relationship. But they still want to be in a polygamous relationship with that option that they had when they were younger. She's 70. She ain't got no option that she had when she was 40, when she was 30, when she was 25. Those options are gone. And here's the thing. At her age, she ain't got no options. Even if you want an older woman than a younger woman, you don't want a younger. You don't want her. She ain't got no options. Now, mentally, she's prepared to do it. But I want y'all to listen to the rest of what she says. <laughs> you can do that? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, okay. You know what? You joking or you serious? What do you think the benefits no, could be? I'm very serious. Really? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Mm-hmm. I, when I was younger, I couldn't because I didn't know who I was. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand the value and the purpose of a relationship. So The value and the purpose of a relationship. All that work she's done to make money, she realizes she wasted her life on provision and protection when the perfect scenario would have been for her to have been a feminine, submissive wife for a man who could handle the provision and protection, which we are built for. Here's the thing you got to understand about a woman who focuses on provision and protection. It's fun while she's doing it because she can pump her chest and beat her chest and hold her head high and say, I don't need no man. I can do this. But she loses out and wastes her entire life being the opposite of what she was put here to be. And that's a woman, a feminine, submissive woman. We, as men, getting to the money, that's our thing. We never start to feel like we wasted our life. As long as we get into the money and elevating our lives, we feel accomplished and more accomplished and even more accomplished. We on our deathbed at 99 years old and we've made all these accomplishments. We die with a smile on our face because we spent our lives being a man. A woman who does that, she spent her life being the opposite of what she was put here to be. She wasn't being a man. She wasn't being a woman. She was being some caught in the middle, in the abyss of nothingness. And she dies empty. When I was younger, I didn't do cheating. I didn't do cheating. But I could do polygamy. I could, I could be one of other wives. 
in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Really? I couldn't have done that when I was 30 or 40. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was, I ended up marrying a man who was a polygamist. My second husband was, came out of a polygamous relationship. And at that time, I thought, you know, you're cheating. I still don't do cheating. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do that, it has to be an open conversation and agreement. But you sneaking around the corner with, you know, Chris Damata, uh-uh, mm -hmm. no, no, I don't do cheating. Mm -hmm. but you know why? It's dishonest. I agree. And if you're going to lie to me, then I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. But if we sit down and this is what we want to do, I like it because you be over there sometime. I'll be over here. I don't have to cook. I save my toilet paper. You don't have to <laughs> my toothpaste. You know, go on. Well, see, I'm old, so I could do polygamy. It was a shocker because I just wanted to hear her voice and, and tell her that, hey, you know, we got into this firefight and how's everybody doing? I didn't even get the opportunity to tell her what happened. She's just like, you know what? I'm just tired of your shit. I'm divorcing you. And she hung up on me and I'm like, let me tell y'all something, man. The dumbest shit you can do is be in the military and marry a woman. Legal marriage is dumb, but it's even dumber. If you got to be in the military and you marry a woman, boy, don't you understand? That if you, that's why God tells the children of Israel, when a man take on a new wife, he shall not be charged to, with going to war. He shall not be charged with any business. He shall take one year to cheer up his new wife. What does cheer up his new wife mean? Integrate her into her new life. She has been living a certain life. You want to take that time, integrate her into her new life. Put her in a position where she's so comfortable and she feels like the best thing she can do is please you by performing the duty of maintaining the household whenever you have to be away. That's what cheering her up is about. You have to, that gives you a year to put her in the position you want her to be in. As you learn her and what it takes for her to be in the mindset you need her to be in to feel like, okay, like hustle and flow. When he went down, she knew the best thing she had to do was go and make sure that music popped off. She used she used what she had. He made he he cultivated her into that. He she used what he taught her to be in order to make some pop for him. That's the same equivalent of bad. I hate to use that example, but that's what happens in your life. In your life, you have to make sure that you honor these tried and true testaments these commandments and statutes that God has set before us that help in a situation. The majority of men don't even take any time. They take that little honeymoon time and then they back to work. No, you got to be in a situation. And what does that entail? That entails that your ass getting to the money and you your own boss. God intended for you to be your own boss. He intended for that. The education system is not about keeping you from getting money. It's about keeping you from being your own boss. That way you can't implement the things that create the household you need. Let's keep listening to this, man. On the satellite phone, like, fuck. If we got back to Arif John, back then they had fucking signs there were three minute showers, conserved water. I didn't give a shit. I took a 20 minute shower, cold shower. I put on a new, new, new uniform. I had the photo of my wife and my kids and my stepdaughters on my wall locker. I took it off the wall locker and I went down to the chaplain's office. I give them the picture and go, I think I just lost my family. And I think I just lost my family. I want y'all to think about this. You can't lose something that's yours. You notice he didn't say, I think I just lost my wife. He said, no, I think I just lost my family. We could say in retrospect, hindsight is 2020. We could say, well, hey, you could just fight for him and you could go, you can go to court. When a woman tells a man who's off in the military, just got out of a firefight where he could have lost his life and he calls her to say, baby, I'm safe. I could have just got taken out in a firefight and she says i'm tired of your shit i'm leaving you you just uh you're an idiot if you believe that man is in any type of mental state emotional state to just go about let me call my lawyer and get it together no how cruel can a woman be to do this and i'm not even knocking a woman for being cruel i'm knocking him for marrying a woman who was this cruel she wasn't a good girl and suddenly this just popped up Man, listen, a woman cannot hide who she is. She can hide what she's done, but she can't hide who she is. Knowing female nature is not about knowing what a woman is going to do in any situation. It's about understanding when a woman is being herself versus when she's faking. And I just started breaking down. I, 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 I lost it. 
And then I caught myself. I'm like, hell no, shut up, drink water, change your socks. You know what? I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to waste your time. And I left. Sergeant Mathis, he was going through the same thing two weeks prior. He's like, go to JAG. Get your revocation of power of attorney. Because it takes 10 days from mail from Iraq to get to the States. By the time the bank got it, she had already taken money out of the bank. I think she only left me with $317 in my savings account. When she went back to get that, the bank got the revocation of power of attorney. They told her no. She had already taken everything out of the house. She wasn't paying the mortgage for three months. By the time I got home, it was 2008. The market crashed. I was upside down 75000 I had dead grass. All my grass in the backyard, front yard was gone. She only left me the sofa and the recliner and all my clothes hanging in my closet. And that was it. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. Legal marriage is the absolute dumbest shit you could do in America. Maybe in the rest of the world. I don't know. I live in America. It's the dumbest thing you could do because it gives a woman an out where whenever she doesn't like what the hell is going on or whenever she tires of playing the game or whenever the real work starts, she can just quit. It's not that marriage is bad. It's not bad to have a wife. It's bad to legally marry a woman because it absolves her of the responsibility of putting in the damn work. You can't build anything and have someone support it when they don't have to put in any effort or any work. It just doesn't make sense. Even if a woman is built to put in work and work, if she's in a situation where she can be rewarded for leaving when the job gets hard, why would she? Why would anyone? You got to be a special kind of motherfucker, man. If you could go to work and they could tell you, you know what? We're going to have an employee, uh, an employee dedication week, an employee appreciation week. All of y'all can stay at home and we're going to pay you overtime. And you're going to be the one that say, oh, uh, no, 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 Mr. Green. No, I can't do that to you now, Mr. Green. I know how business is. I'm going to come here. I'm going to do everybody's work, Mr. Green. And you ain't got to pay me overtime. You can pay me my regular pay there, Mr. Green. Matter of fact, I'm going to help you pay everybody else, Mr. Green. Give me a pay cut for this week because I don't want you to go in the hole trying to pay all these people overtime staying at home. Who going to do that? <laughs>